Morning. How's everybody doing today? Good. Welcome to Bethel Assembly of God. What was that? You have a headache? Okay. I appreciate that. I mean, you sharing that. I don't appreciate you have one, but so. <laughs> well, welcome to Bethel Assembly of God. We're excited for what the Lord has in store for us today. As always, if you're joining us online, I encourage you to use the comment features to attempt to connect with other people that are streaming with you that way. Uh, but I want to read to you Jesus' comments from Matthew 11. He says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Doesn't that sound good? Okay. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When we come to follow Jesus, he makes everything better. Amen. Amen. Will you stand with me? Let's turn our attention to him. Father, we thank you that you give, the, give us that offer. That though we are not deserving and though we can't really offer you anything truly but our surrender, we thank you that you offer us that rest, you offer us that peace, and you offer us to encounter the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I ask, Lord, as we seek you, that you would allow us to have that, the presence of the Holy Spirit and the work of the Spirit in our lives. And as we have that, help us, Lord, to give praise and glory and honor to your name, for we ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen. Let's worship together. together to worship him because he's worthy but there's as much benefit in it for us as we worship him or we're reminded as we sing his words of God's character and as we worship him his spirit strengthens us as we enter into that rest let's give him praise today Sing forever, God is faithful. 
And you break every chain, oh God. You have done great things. So we dance in your freedom. Awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name we lift it high. Oh God, you have done great things. Sing hallelujah. Lord. And Lord, that greatest thing is when you came and you died for us, Lord, when you sacrificed yourself. Oh, Lord, we give you thanks and praise. Hallelujah. So, Lord, no matter this, the circumstances of our lives, Lord, no matter what's going on, Lord, we choose to give you honor and to give you praise.
Hallelujah. Lord, I'm so thankful for that sacrifice that you made at the cross, Lord, when you came and you gave yourself willingly, Lord. Lord, all you had to do, there were angels that were ready to come and rescue you, Lord, but you said no. You stayed on that cross, Lord, and it was for us, Lord. It was to make a way for us. So, Lord, we just declare our praise and honor of you today, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe in the sun. I believe in the risen one. I believe I overcome by the power of his blood. Amen. Amen. I'm alive, I'm alive because he lives. Amen. Amen. So let my soul.
you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Alive forevermore. He tasted death once for us, but Lord, never again. Hallelujah. And Lord, I'm so thankful that you came and you died. I'm so thankful for that sacrifice. But Lord, I'm reminded that it was because of your love. And Lord, it's not, as your word tells us, it's not that we found you or came looking for you, it's that you came looking for us. Lord, there was that time when each one of us was that one sheep that was lost that you would leave the 99 for. And Lord, I thank you and praise you that you came to find me and that your love is so constant, so amazing. Lord, we give you honor and praise today. If you have a need, these altars are open. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. the 
before you flawed Lord and sometimes that makes us feel like we can't have or enjoy the things that you want to give us but we don't get to have and enjoy the things that you have for us because of what we've done and what we've earned for our striving 
doesn't matter if we messed up yesterday or the day before or even this morning. Because of the work that you did on the cross, because of conquering death by rising from the dead, you paid the price for us so we can freely, each time, Lord, your mercies are new every morning, we can freely come and enjoy the peace that surpasses all understanding, the forgiveness and mercy and grace, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, the wisdom of God. And so, Lord, I ask that you would just continue to do the work that you've been doing as we've been worshiping you, that as we look to other things, as we give, as we look to your word, let us experience the freedom that your mercy and grace gives us. Let us experience the confidence and the assurance that no matter what's going on in us, as long as we surrender to you, you have everything for us. You are the sovereign Lord. You have all power, and you have everything to give, and you are love, Lord. And so help us, Lord, to fully experience that. And we ask in Jesus' name. Everyone said, amen. amen. Bless you. You can be seated if you're not already. Thank you for entering into worship. Thank you, worship team, for leading us this morning. Appreciate you guys. So, a few quick announcements before we receive the offering this morning. One, uh, men's retreat is coming up in a couple of weeks from today. And if you haven't signed up, we're still willing to let you come. Uh, just make sure to, we actually have a meeting, the guys have a meeting in that room after service. So if you're interested but you haven't, let us know or signed up. Just come right into that meeting and we'll, we'll get you squared away. Uh, also, the ladies are taking their retreat to Hershey uh, in November and, and they're getting ready for registration and things like that, which uh, most of the stuff is due at the end of this month. Uh, so if you're interested in coming or you have any questions, uh, just sign up at the back table to indicate your interest, and they'll make sure to, to guide you through that. Or see Heather or Cindy after service as well, okay? Uh, the Spiritual Strategy Course, if you are not a member of Bethel Assembly of God and you would like to be, uh, then that's the course you would take to become a member. Uh, so if you're interested, it's Saturday, uh, September the 28th from 9 a.m. to noon right in that back room. So just sign up on the back table to let us know that you're coming. Uh, so we know how much food and, and how many notes to have printed out and things like that. Uh, also, as you know from the month of August that we spent uh, talking about pastoring your neighborhood, uh, if you haven't jumped on board with that uh, and you are interested, just make sure to see me or let me know and I'll, I'll help guide you. If you are already in on that uh, and you need some guidance, just contact me. I'm still working on getting you some official things, but our goal is to reach the neighborhood, right? We are called to be the salt and light of the world. Uh, Jesus called us to be that. And so uh, may we do that and see more people come to the Lord. Uh, we have, uh, I had mentioned last week, uh, Aaron stepping down. And so we have to appoint a new board member. And I wanted to read to you from, it's exciting reading from our bylaws. <laughs> but in our bylaws, Article 2, Section 4, B, D, <laughs> It says, the pastor with the approval of the official board shall, shall fill any vacancy in, in office for the remainder of the prescribed term. Board service by appointment shall not count against one's eligibility for two consecutive terms. Uh, so the board and I uh, prayerfully considered and discussed, and uh, we have uh, appointed Habiba to fill in that role for Aaron. So Habiba, if you'd come this time. And John and Cindy, my remaining board, if you would come at this time. And we want to pray over her that the Lord would anoint Habiba and give her wisdom as she has to deal with our craziness. So come on up here, if you would. Uh, and if you guys would extend your hand towards her as we, we pray the Lord's anointing upon her. John's ready for the Steelers game today. <laughs> Lord, we thank you that, that you provide when there's vacancies, you take care of that need, and we are grateful that Habiba willingly stepped forward to, to be in this position, and we're asking, Lord, that you would fill her with wisdom, that you would strengthen her faith and her heart to be yielded and in, in line with the leading of the Holy Spirit and with the principles of your word, 
And we ask, Lord, that you would use her to be a, a good impact upon this congregation and the direction of this church. We thank you for her, and we ask for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you give her a hand? Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and if you're, if you're not aware of this, uh, sometimes we don't see Habiba as much because she's hiding downstairs taking care of our children a lot of times, uh, but we're grateful that she does that. John asked if he could pray for the offering this morning of ushers, if you'd come and prepare. Elmer. There's one time in the Bible where it says where God te tells us to test them. Test me in this, he says, only once. It's with our giving, only once. The problem is we think that we are the owners of what we have. We are not. We are the stewards of what we have. And when we can't get that, this might sound harsh, but it's because we don't trust God at his word. Do we trust him when his word says to give? So I pray, Heavenly Father, for everyone in this room that lacks that trust in you. We think we know what's best. We don't. Help us to be the stewards of what you have already given us. Do the work in our hearts. Cut away everything that needs to be cut away so that we can be your servants here in this church. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, John. Appreciate that. If you would turn with me to uh, Psalm 127. And we're going to land at, at a number of different spots. It's why you have your outline in front of you, which if you did not receive an outline, just raise your hand and someone will come along and bring that to you. So, Cindy, we got uh, this beautiful woman to my left over here. <laughs> Anybody else need a handout? Just raise your hand and, and she'll come along and bring that to you. So we got uh, May over here as well. Psalm 127. And 1 Timothy chapter 6. We're going to end at 1 Timothy chapter 6, but we're going to start in Psalm 127. Now, those two spots are pretty far from each other uh, in, in the Scripture. So if you don't want to hold your space, I think it's printed out on your outline as well. But Psalm 127 and 1 Timothy chapter 6 this morning. Uh, as I referenced a moment ago, today is opening day for Steelers. And anybody going to be eating food, a lot of food associated with the game today? Anybody not eating food at all today? Nobody's eating food today? Oh. <laughs> well, you guys fasting and praying for today. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, but if you are going to eat food, and us guys, one of the things we love to eat at a game is meat, right? Wings. It's good to eat meat. You know, wings, okay. And we have different names for our meats, even if it comes from the same animal, right? So you have uh, pork chops or bacon, ham, uh, Ribs, thank you. Uh, but are we at the same animal still? Uh, <laughs> Sometimes, okay, ribs. Uh, what's that? Pork steaks. Pork steaks, okay. See, we're now, yeah, we're in the same theme, okay. And so we got different names for the meat that comes from the same animal. We don't say, I'm going to eat some pig. You know, we say, I'm going to eat ham or whatever. And there's other meats that we eat, like beef. Steak, regular steak, uh, prime rib, those kind of things, beef tips or hamburgers or ground beef, all of that stuff. We don't say, I'm going to eat cow, right? We say, we're going to eat steak. So it's understandable if children, when, they, when they're learning this stuff, they're not quite sure where the meat's coming from. So my nephew, however, uh, it took until he was in his teenager years before he finally realized where chicken came from. <laughs> I'm still trying to sort that one out. <laughs> but 
it's because meat's complicated, uh, and as far as we, for kids at least, and life is kind of complicated, you know? We got a lot of stuff going on. Ever feel like, you know that, that guy that will have all the sticks or the poles with the plates on them, and we'll get those plates spinning, and he's got to keep all of them up? Do you ever feel like that in life? Like there's just so much to keep track of and, and sort out, and sometimes we don't realize how all of those things can be connected to each other, and that one action can actually improve every one of those things. So you think about uh, anxiety or worry or stress or disappointment, depression, frustration, anger. And a lot of times anger is stemming from anxiety and stress and worry and frustration, but anger or starting to feel animosity or strife towards others or, or just being agitated and, and cranky. Uh, or seeing those relationships break down, or just feeling cold and distant and aloof, or feeling distant from the Lord. And sometimes we don't realize that all of those things actually are connected to each other, and not that there's not more than one thing that can have a positive impact on all of them, but there's one action that could have a positive impact on all of those that we want to look at this morning. And I don't know if you've ever had one of those nights where you're just exhausted, can't wait to go to sleep, you're just worn out, drained completely, and you go to lay down and go to sleep, and your body says, we're staying awake. And it's not that you're like all of a sudden you were rejuvenated and refreshed, and you're like, okay, I'm ready to go. You're exhausted. You have no energy, and your body says, and we're staying awake for this suffering. Have you ever been there before? Okay. Or have you ever had the opposite, where you just felt completely at ease? You didn't feel worried at all, no stress, your mind wasn't going like crazy, you just felt completely at ease. Ever have moments like that? Okay. Jesus tells us, come rarely, I heard that, come and follow me, come and follow me, and you will find rest for your souls. Now, many times when we think of rest, we think of sleeping. And, and that is a part of that picture. Or maybe we think of reclining on a recliner or laying down on our couch and watching the Steeler game or watching some TV or playing on some kind of screen and just relaxing or some kind of recreation. And rest includes that. But the kind of rest that Jesus wants to give us is larger than that. It's the rest that we can feel completely okay. Everything's all right. I'm relaxed. My peace on the inside, everything around me could be falling apart, but I have rest for my soul. Now, some, when we think of rest, might say, well, Jesus was, we would challenge the Pharisees regarding the Sabbath, you know, because the Sabbath is a day of rest. And he got in arguments with the Pharisees, and we might say, well, but didn't Jesus say uh, that, man, that man wasn't made for the Sabbath? But he followed that by saying, but Sabbath was made for man. And he wasn't saying that Sabbath, the idea of Sabbath, isn't good and isn't something we need. In fact, he was saying the opposite. He was saying that we were designed in a way that we need rest. Larger than sleep, we need rest. And we can experience that peace of God if we understand the way that rest flows. What happens when we rest? Well, we're going to start with needing to choose to rest, which in Psalm 127, if you'd look there with me, Psalm 127, beginning at verse 1, the first two verses. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he, the Lord, gives to his beloved sleep. These people are working, and they're working tirelessly, 
And the Lord says, their striving that they're doing is in vain. It is of no value. It is of no use, the striving that they're doing. They're striving so much. Did you notice that they're burning at both ends? They need to achieve their striving so they get up earlier. They cut off sleep at the morning end. And they go to bed later. They cut off sleep at the, the latter end. It's not that they eliminate it completely, but they're reducing the amount of rest that they have. Why? Because there's stuff that has to get done. Anybody ever feel like that? Has anybody ever lost sleep because of that? There's a, th this stuff needs to get taken care of. Someone needs to take care of this, and I don't have time to rest, so I need to take care of that. And we fail to realize that the Lord says, He's the one who has given us rest. And when we find ourselves constantly striving and never resting, then we're failing to live the way God designed us to live. And we're failing to realize, did you know we're limited? Part of the reason why he created us this way is because we're limited. I don't have all power. Did you know that? You don't have all power. I don't have all wisdom. I don't have all time. I'm limited. I can't keep going all the time. We are not designed that way. And when we say that, that we can keep going, we, we are denying the limitations that God has given us. And so when we decide that we're going to choose to rest, choosing to rest is not just, it's not just sleeping. Choosing to rest is choosing to acknowledge, I have limitations. I can't always keep going, and so I need to rest. But when we choose to do that, then we realize, it becomes revealed to us, that, well, we're going to need to prioritize then. Because if I'm going to rest, then that's going to take time away from taking care of these other things. And this was the, the stuff that these guys in Psalm 127 were wrestling with. Is, well, I can't rest because I have stuff to do. Well, no, you, if you labor without the Lord, so if what I'm doing is not what the Lord wants me to be doing, not what He's giving me the energy to spend it on, then I am doing it in vain. It's a waste to do this if I'm doing it outside of what the Lord wants me to do. And so I have to think, because I only have so much energy, what should I spend the energy on? Because sometimes we're spending all this energy on things, and, and they really don't matter. They're in vain. They're not useful. And, and then we do not have the energy to do the things that God wants us to do because we spent it all over here. Or we don't have the time to do the things that God wants us to do because we spent the time over here. Or ever just get exhausted mentally? You know, your body's not tired, but your mind's fried. I just can't think about another thing. And sometimes we used all our thought capacity on stuff that's in vain. It, was, it didn't accomplish or achieve anything. We spent it all over there, and we had no energy to spend our mind on the things that God wants us to spend our mind on because we didn't prioritize right. Because did you know that you and a CEO has the same amount of time every day? You and the wealthy entrepreneur that's achieving many things has the same amount of time as you do. You and the president of the United States has the same amount of time. We each have 24 hours in a day, and all of us are limited. And so when we choose that we're going to rest, we have to choose to say, I'm limited, I can't do everything, and so I need to. And what it forces us to see is that we need to make sacrifices. We need to choose, okay, this I can't do. I just don't have the time for it. This I'm going to do because I need to spend time on that. My energy and my, my thoughts and my resources should go to this because that's not in vain because that's what the Lord wants me to spend it on. Yeah. This, I don't want to spend it on that. And we need to be careful to make sure we're, we're choosing the right things, that we're making sure, because some, some of us are not planners. And who are my planners here? Love you guys. You guys are wonderful. <laughs> Who are not my planners in here? I also love you guys. You guys are wonderful. But you might struggle with this prioritizing thing because those who are non-planners just kind of go with what happens. You know, whatever's right in front of me, I'm going to do. And then, then, then when that happens, at the end of the day, we stop and look at it and we realize I'm exhausted. I can't do any more. And what did I do with that energy? Nothing. I labored in vain. And so it forces us to sacrifice. But some of us don't like the sacrifice. Some of us don't like to give things up. And, and we're like that Queen song, you know, I want it all, 
No, we decide, no, no, I, I, I want more or I want all of it. And so I'm going to, like these guys in Psalm 127, I'm going to rest less or uh, I'm going to do that uh, smaller amounts of time so I can get more stuff achieved and more stuff done. Some of you, I know you know that you think this way. You think, I'm going to rest less so I can get more stuff done. Well, if you do that, if you choose to sacrifice rest, then I hope that you know what you're doing when you're sacrificing rest. Again, uh, actually, let me read to you Exodus 31, verse 16 and 17. Therefore, the people of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, observing the Sabbath throughout their generations as a covenant forever. It is a sign forever between me and the people of Israel that in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. This idea of resting is linked between us and our relationship with the Lord. In fact, these guys in Psalm 127, they did not trust because if God says you're limited and you need to rest, and we say, no, I don't need to rest, I need to get some stuff done, we are not trusting that we can get what we want by living the way that God wants us to live. When I say I can't rest because I need this, because when we, when we truly, when we say I can't spend time sleeping or resting, it's because we're trying to achieve other things, right? Right? There's stuff we're trying to get. And when I do that, think about this. Remember, remember in, in the wilderness, uh, God provided for them manna. And he said that he would give them manna, they would find it every morning, except for on one day a week. And on that one day of the week, they were not supposed to go out and get any manna because they were supposed to trust God that if they worked six days and rested the seventh, God would give them the things that they need. And so when we say, God, I don't need to rest, we are telling God, I don't trust you to give me the things that I want and need by living the way you told me to live. And so when I choose not to rest, I need to make sure I realize that that's what I'm doing. It's an act of distrust towards the Lord. I also need to realize, did you notice in Psalm 127, those who were getting up early and staying up late, it says, and they are eating the bread of anxious toil. We have to realize that when we choose not to rest, we are embracing and welcoming anxiety into our lives. Think of the story that is often mentioned for a number of reasons, uh, Peter walking on the water. As long as Peter was thinking about Jesus, he was walking on that water. But when Jesus started thinking about, well, there's this problem, and there's this problem, and there's this concern, and this worry, when he was focused on the things he was concerned about, the things that he needed, the things that he wanted, he could not focus on the Lord. And he became anxious, because the only way we cannot be anxious is to be in the Lord. And when we are focused on all the things that need to be done, we are anxious. Think of Mary and Martha. One was focused on the Lord, and one, Jesus said, why are you worried about a great many things, because we cannot be at peace when we're focusing on our problems. Think of Psalm 35 last week that we read, that the, the psalmist pray, came to the Lord with all his problems. He talked about his problems, but he came to the Lord all, with all his problems and said, these are what I'm dealing with. I'm bringing them to you. And then he turned and said, now I can rejoice in the Lord. He was able to be at peace when he turned to the Lord instead of his problems. That's why Jesus said in Luke 9, 62, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. And so if I decide I'm committed, I'm surrendered to, I want the Lord, but what about my problems? What about this issue and this relationship and this concern? And when that's what I'm focused on, I become anxious. What about what Paul says in Philippians 4? Rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice how? In the Lord. I will say again, rejoice. Let your reasonableness, the stability that we find, our joy and our stability is found by, by the Lord, be known to everyone. Why? The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. What happens when we decide to focus on Him rather than our problems? And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Notice it says that the peace of God will guard your hearts and your minds. It doesn't say the peace of God will guard your circumstances. 
The peace of God will guard your bank account or your job. The peace of God will guard your physical body and your health. It doesn't say that. It's not that the Lord can't bring those things into our lives, but what it says is the peace of God will guard your hearts and minds. It means that I, no matter what's going around me, if I am focused on the Lord in my heart and mind, what will be going on there? Peace. There might be storms all around me, but if I'm focused on the Lord, there's peace right in within here. Jesus told us in John 14, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give. Let, your not, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The Lord wants to give us peace. Come and follow me, he says, and I will give you rest. We also have to realize that when we embrace when we decide I'm going to sacrifice rest, that we're also choosing to be a burden to others. Now here's how. In Exodus 23, verse 12, it says, Six days you shall do your work, but on the seventh day you shall rest. Why? So that you can have rest? Yes, yeah, part of it. But also that your ox and your donkey may have rest, and the son of your servant woman and the alien may be refreshed as well as you. So I need to rest so that other people can rest. Let me put it this way. Have you ever been in a house with someone and they're anxious, they're stressed, or they're, they're, they're agitated, but they're, but they're being self-controlled? You know, they're, like they're not saying anything to you, they're not, they're not getting on your case, they're not banging stuff around, but they just, you can feel that they're not happy. Have you ever felt that before? Okay, you just feel like they're not okay. And how easy is it to be at ease when that's around. Maybe even that person's in the living room and you're upstairs on the other end of the house in the bedroom, but you know they're there. Can you be totally at ease with that person in the house? There's a little bit of turbulence of, I don't know what's going to happen. That guy's agitated. Not, nothing's happening now, but I'm not sure. Or if you're around someone that's just constantly bustling around the house. This guy got to take care of this, and they're doing that, and they're running around. And not that, there's, not that we're not supposed to work and do those things. But if I'm never resting, and I'm constantly just doing stuff, and doing stuff, and doing stuff, and doing stuff, the people that are around me, they can't be at peace in that. They can't rest in that. And so I'm burdening the people that are around me when I choose not to rest. And listen, I understand. This is, it's hard for me to do this. Because it's like this. You, you decide, okay, I'm going to rest, and I'm going to sit down on my couch, and I'm going to do nothing. Now, let me add something for a moment, and we'll get back to this, but I'm not talking about rest like I'm going to watch TV, you know, or I'm going to play on my phone, or I'm going to return some emails, because sometimes we have a way of resting while not resting, okay? I mean, just I'm just going to sit here on my couch I'm not going to put anything on. I'm just going to do nothing for the next 30 minutes. Now, some of you think in 30 minutes, that's way too long. You can't just sit and do nothing for 30 minutes. And if you're like me, what happens when, if I try to do this, if I try to make myself sit down and rest, you know what I'm thinking? This is a waste of time. There's so many other things that could be happening right now, good, important things that could be happening right now. It's a waste of time to sit here and do nothing. But the Lord tells us that he has provided rest for us and we find ourselves running around and doing all these other things and then we wonder why we're stressed out and everybody else is around us stressed out and we think, but I'm doing the right things. We are doing the right things, but we're also doing the wrong thing because we're not resting. If I choose not to rest, again, Psalm 127, unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. One way or another, if I choose to not rest, what I'm choosing is failure for myself. And it can come one of two ways. Either I strive and I strive and I work hard and I, I lose sleep over it and I keep going because I want this better job or I want a better income or, or I want to achieve this or whatever. I want a better house. I want a car. I want a whatever. And we work hard and we sacrifice to get it. And then we do get it. We achieve the thing that we were after. 
But after we achieved it, we realized that some of my relationships got fractured because of that sacrifice. Some of my health isn't that great. My emotions aren't that good. And all of a sudden, I have the car, I have the job, I have the house, I have the money, but I don't have any peace. I'm still anxious. I'm still, I don't feel content and okay because I was striving and laboring for things that the Lord didn't have for me, and I was striving and laboring in vain. There's another way to look at it in that many times when we do all the striving without the resting, we do a poor job at the thing we're trying to do. Because if you stay all night up all night trying to think through how to write something that's clear, I mean, have you ever had those times where you stayed up all night and like, anybody ever been, there's an old way to refer to it as the slap happy? You just got the giggles and you're just, you're just nonsense. And everything is totally funny in that moment. And you think about it the next day and you think, that was so funny. You tell someone else and you realize, that wasn't funny at all. What was wrong with me? Because I wasn't sleeping. And we realize I'm going to try to do this relationship thing and I have to do the relationship thing and I don't have time without sleeping, so I need to not rest to do the relationship thing. And then we do it poorly because we're agitated. We're irritable. We don't have the emotional energy for it because we're failing to acknowledge that we're limited. We don't have all energy. We don't have all time. We don't have all knowledge. And so we have to decide to stop and rest. And those of you that are workers or hard workers, and this is a hard lesson to learn because it feels so unproductive to do nothing. But if you are workers, and I'm discovering that this is the case, if I decide to take time to rest, you know what happens? I am much more productive and much more efficient and much more level-headed and clear thinking when I choose to begin to do the work the next time that I get much more achieved with the resting than I do with no resting. And so if we choose to sacrifice rest, we're choosing to fail. And so we must think about when we choose to sacrifice rest, what we're doing. We're distrusting the Lord. We're burdening others. We're embracing anxiety and we're choosing failure. That's not a good sell, is it? And so if I decide, well, okay, maybe I don't want that, okay? I, maybe I do want to have rest and experience this rest. Maybe I'll embrace this idea. How do I do it? Exodus 20, verse 8 to 10, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. We're commanded to do this. Again, in Exodus 31, this practice is a sign between us and the Lord. That if I choose this, that means I'm yielding to what He wants in my life, even if I don't want it. It's, it's funny how we, we say that we want rest, and we want peace, we want sleep and we want our anxiety to go. And then when he says, here, have it, have this peace, we say, no, I don't want it that way. Come and follow me and you will find rest for your souls. It's not found in watching the Steeler game. Again, it can contain that, all right? It's not that he doesn't want to give us recreation and rest and sleep. But true rest is found when we choose to yield our lives to him. That, you know what, Whatever, what, what do you want from my time? All right, I'll do that. I'll follow you. I'll do what it is that you want. From, I'll believe that. I'll follow you. And then we find rest for our souls. And also, Deuteronomy 5.15 says, You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, now I want you to notice the therefore, Okay. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. I want you to remember the things that God has done because you're going to practice rest. As I had mentioned before, we keep this mind occupied almost constantly. And if you want to find rest, sometimes in order to do that, I need to turn off the phone. I need to turn off the computer. I need to disconnect from the Internet for a moment. Turn off my data. I need to turn off the radio and all the other sounds that are buzzing around in my house. Maybe I need to get out of my house. I need to get away from people. And I need to choose to just do and think about nothing. And you see, some of us who struggle to hear the voice of God, this is the reason why. Because we can't hear Him because we're constantly keeping this thing occupied. 
And it's when I choose to rest that I can reflect and know the things of God and the truths of God and the stuff that God wants to do in my life. And I know that some of us don't do this because we're worried about what thoughts might come up if we stop the busyness that's going on in our heads. But we fail to experience the things that God wants to say to us that will allow us to find rest for our souls. Think of it this way. We know that statement in the Scripture, delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. It's not that delight yourself in the Lord and you'll just get every one of your wishes. It's delight yourself in the Lord and you will be satisfied. Jesus says, He who wants to gain his life will lose it, and he who's willing to lose his life for my sake will gain it. We're always fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting to get our satisfaction that we want instead of just yielding and saying, whatever you want, Lord. And it's that person that gains. God called Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac, to give him up. And when Abraham was willing to give him up, what did he get? He got to keep his son. And what do we gain? Well, again, Exodus 23, 12, six days you shall labor and do all your work that you may be refreshed. Have you ever been refreshed before? Yes. Doesn't that sound good? You may be refreshed, energized. Mark 6, 30 to 32, in case again, Jesus bucked against the Sabbath. In case again, we think that Jesus was kind of anti-rest. The apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. They were working. And then Jesus said to them, come away with me by yourself to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they, were, they had no leisure even to eat. I love that this this verse used that word leisure. And they went away in a boat to a desolate place by themselves. There was Jesus. They were in the midst of working, work that he told them to do. And then once they were done, Jesus said, let's go rest. Let's go find some leisure. Let's go be alone and get away from other people for a while. It doesn't necessarily mean completely isolated because they weren't. They were alone with the people they were comfortable with. But let's just do, some of us have a hard time just doing something just because it's fun just because it feels good. Now, I'm not saying that whatever feels good, do it. I'm not saying that. But the Lord wants to give us pleasure and joy and peace. and sad. We hear Him calling that, come and follow me and I will give you rest. But so often we're, for some reason, fighting against what it is that the Lord wants to introduce into our lives. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 11, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. If you will look at 1 Timothy chapter 6, this is where we'll end this morning. 1 Timothy chapter 6. And though we might get our attention drawn to money here, which it does talk about money, it's actually talking about pursuing, going after things, and in 1 Timothy verse six, verse, or chapter 6, verse 6, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we cannot take anything out of the world. There's that limitation again. We, we made nothing. We have no claim on anything. And this posture is good, and it leads to gain. Verse 8, But if we have food and clothing with these, we will be content. But those who desire to be rich, don't get lost with just the money part. Those who desire, who want more things, it could be possessions, it could be money, it could be job, it could be a relationship, it could be a hobby, it could be whatever. Those who want more fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. These people aren't necessarily going after sin. They're going after more. They're sacrificing to have more. And that leads to ruin and destruction, just like we just saw. If I decide to sacrifice rest, the things that God calls me to, I destroy. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. It is through this craving that some have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. I can't tell you how many stories I know and have heard of 
of people who were working 60 hours a week and building a successful business and were looking to build a great retirement future for themselves and they died of a massive heart attack at 53. They never got to enjoy the fruits of their labor because they never rested in the midst of their labor. Verse 11, But as for you, O man of God, flee these things, pursue. Did you notice this? He's not against the pursuing. Those who are going after this, like, don't spend your time. That's why Psalm 127 says, those who build what the Lord's not building labor in vain. But he didn't say those who build, those who strive do it in vain. Those who do what the Lord's not doing strive and labor in vain. But he says, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. He wants us to expend energy, but on the right things. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and about which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I charge you in the presence of God who gives life. This is what he wants to give to us, who gives life to all things. And of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession to to keep the commandment unstained and free from reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will display at the proper time He who is blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in inapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see to him, be glory and eternal dominion. Amen. Do you notice that he goes into this pursuit, and you know where he lands? In the presence of God, and praising and worshiping the Lord. In verse 17, as for the rich in this present age, charge them not to be haughty, in order to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches. Again, how many times do we chase after things that are so unsure? But on God, listen to this, those of us who are not fun-loving or anti-pleasure, who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. He wants you to know and experience joy and delight and pleasure and fulfillment and peace. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share, thus storing up treasure for themselves. You see this? As a good foundation for the future so that they may take hold of that which is truly life. You want to know life and peace and joy and rest and fulfillment and pleasure? It's found in pursuing the Lord Jesus Christ and the will that he has for our lives. Will you stand with me? Worship team, will you come and prepare to lead us? Again, rest is more than recreation, sleep. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding that guards our hearts and minds. To know that kind of peace, that kind of rest. Jesus simply says, there's no big equation for this. He just says, come and follow me. and You will find rest for your soul. And so Jesus is here this morning to be pursued. And so as the worship team begins to lead us in worship, do you need rest for your soul this morning? Then begin to come out of your seats and down to this altar and lay yourself at the feet of Jesus like like that young woman did and find rest for your soul. Are you anxious this morning? Are you stressed? Are you worried? Are you depressed? Are you lacking in fulfillment? Are you frustrated and agitated and angry? Is there strife and animosity and bitterness in your relationships? Is there coldness in your heart towards others and towards God? If any of that is stirring up and happening in your heart, then you don't have peace. Maybe your home's in order. Maybe you're achieving certain things, but you don't have the peace that the Lord wants to give to you. You're not at ease. So then come and be at ease this morning. Come and experience the peace that surpasses all understanding that he wants to wash over you this morning. 
Come and experience the feeling that everything is going to be okay. Do you want it? Then come down to this altar this morning and seek him. Jesus calls to you. Come and follow me and you will find rest for your soul.
times of refreshing. And I ask, Lord, that you would help, that you would remind us when we're busy and we're about our day and week and we've got a lot of things to do and we need the work, Lord. There's, there are things that you call us to tend to and spend our energy on. I ask, Lord, that you would, in the midst of all of that, help us to hear you calling you back to rest, calling us back to be refreshed in your presence, to be renewed, and that you would help us to know that there's, there's, no, there's no magic formula. There's no one person is more special than another. We don't need a preacher standing by our side. We don't need a worship team leading us to it. The Holy Spirit is there and available everywhere we are. Lord Jesus, you said yourself, Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And so help us to remember that when we're burdened and we're stressed, all we have to do is call out to you. All we have to do is follow you, and we will find rest. And I ask, Lord, for these that came forward this morning and anybody else who has need of that, that you would help them to be at ease, Lord, to be at rest in your presence. We thank you for your lasting peace. And we give you glory and honor for all that you do in our lives and hearts. And we ask that you would continue to do that work and help us to use the energy that we do have, Lord, to bring glory and honor to your name in the way we live and talk and act. Help us with that, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So some of you might need a nap later. Some of you might need to get away or get outside. But seek the Lord and know his peace and rest. Amen. And those of you that are workers are thinking, but we need to do work, right? Okay, next week we're going to talk about that rhythm of that balance between work and rest and how to do that. But for now... Go and enjoy his rest. I love you. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Thank you.